All right, today we are going to expand upon what we learned with our patterns and perforations. Um, I'm going to, before we get into actual dynamic patterning, I want to show you just a little bit about how you would begin to integrate uh, whatever it is you've developed, if it's a pattern or a shading system, how you begin to integrate it into your actual model. Then we'll look at the, the patterning exercises a little bit more. Um, I know that you probably have some remaining questions about what's what we went over in our review on Tuesday. Um, I just want to kind of close the book on this little segment so that you can at least start thinking about implementing Grasshopper into your design process now. Um, and then next week, with a fresh week, we'll jump back into that and start to look at how we're going to uh, integrate a little bit more of the design in our class here. So, so this is just geometry uh, generation today, and then we'll go back to the graphs and stuff on uh, Tuesday? Yes. Okay. So since you've been through it, it's totally OK if you wanted to go. But this might be a little different. Yeah. Um, OK. So what I've done is I basically put together a very, very simple pavilion, right? There's nothing special about it, not really a designy kind of thing. We are going to simulate the different facade systems that you could potentially use in the east, south, and west side of the building. Um, <laughs> what's most notable about this is that we're going to actually reference what we're doing differently now is we're not just generating the geometry in Grasshopper, we're referencing it into a model that we've quote unquote designed. Even though this isn't really a design project right now, we've designed it. And so we now want to put our Grasshopper script or definition into it. So <clears throat> um, to, to kind of outline what we're going to be doing and where you can get this, in this file location, uh, K Gremlang 16 Spring Arc 222, assignment five, and shading systems case study. While you guys get this open, um, I'll explain what we're doing. <clears throat> the JPEGs that are in here, oh, I named them wrong. Hmm, they're backwards. The JPEGs that are in here are the assignment, essentially. And it's not going to be something that we do. I can't give you all of the knowledge you need to do this right now in one day, basically. So we're going to take it sort of piecemeal. Um, you see a couple of different systems here that we're going to look at, one of which down the bottom here on the south elevation is a perforation system. That would be this one right here. So what we've developed as an abstract perforation, we're now going to put it into the building, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, another one is a simple uh, sunshade awning system overhang. Um, basically, this one is attached to the building rather than a part of the design itself. <coughs> and ideally, you kind of see a little dash heading back down to this point. What I want to do is, and, and this is new to me too, I want to actually tie the length of that overhang, the depth of it, to the sun angle, and then tie the height of the perforation to meet exactly the sun angle uh, depth so that you have a clear window, basically a clear story window that's blocked with perforations below wherever the sun's going to be at particular, uh, at, I guess you could probably say the average sun height for the day. And then um, the depth of the, the um, overhang attachment is uh, parametric to the sun angle as well. Um, <clears throat> and then on the east side, we're going to look at, yes? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's the intent of this one is that we can have a smaller overhang if we treat the window system in some other fashion. Okay. <clears throat> and then on the east facade, we're basically going to do a horizontal louver system. Um, I might change that to vertical, but actually I think I made this horizontal as well. I wanted to make this vertical now that I'm thinking about it. I'll fix this. Anyway. Um, a horizontal louver system, typically if you're going to do a horizontal louver system, you also, uh, you would usually use that on the south facade, or if you're in like a southeast, southwest sort of orientation, um, usually if you're facing directly east or mostly east, um, you would want to use vertical louvers, but I'm just trying to show you different systems here, so we're kind of simulating it. So what I did was, at the end, I put a vertical louver just at the end to kind of clip it off a little bit. 
we'll talk about <clears throat> we'll talk about efficacy and stuff like that as we go along. I just want you to know how to do different things. Um, and then on the west, it's the same kind of system except it's triangulated. And my intent was I just drew it wrong. My intent was to make it vertical. So we were going to do one system horizontal, not truncated and triangulated, and then one system vertical, truncated and triangulated. Okay. So the order that we're going to go in <coughs> is basically implementing the perforation system is what we're going to do today. Pretty much, I think we're going to do just that today and then talk about, you know, patterning exercises and geometries and cuts and stuff like that. And then um, maybe we can get to the overhang. And then um, at some point, maybe next week or the week after, we'll be able to start looking at this. But once you get the overhang, you should actually be prepared probably to do the rest of it, too, in some form or fashion. Okay, so uh, I imagine that this will probably take overall, in terms of just class time, even though we're probably going to break it up over a few weeks, it's probably three days of class time that it'll take us to actually get through it all. Any questions? Yes? Um, I'm just uh, curious why the, the vertical <coughs> Um, that's a good question. Um, basically, if if the sun's coming up, let's say, well, I wish I could explain it on screen. But basically, if your sun, let's say it's it's close to the equinox and your sun is coming up at directly east, uh -huh. um, for the entire three first three hours of the day, uh -huh. your sun is rising as it's moving around the building towards the south, and it's rising kind of fast depending on what time of year. But basically, throughout that entire range, you're getting a full horizontal shot into the space okay. across the entire width of that facade. Mm -hmm. um, if you go with vertical louvers, you're chopping it off faster because you're subdividing the horizontal width, which is the primary concern in the early part of the day and in the evening mm -hmm. when it's about to be sunset. It, the width is more the primary concern. At the uh, at around noon or the midpoint of the day, that entire range, you're more concerned with the height of the sun rather than its horizontal movement, its oh, azimuth. Okay. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm. <laughs> that's a seven-minute video. I'm just going to stop this one right here, and uh, and move on to actually implementing it in the next one. <laughs>